uh, last month, some residents, uh, some terrorists actually, uh, abducted eight National Youth Corps members in Zamfara State. Or they were actually traveling in an AKTC, that's a Kwai Bomb Transport Corporation bus from Uyo to uh, Sokoto, then going through Zamfara when the terrorists attacked and kidnapped them along with the driver. Uh, we understand that uh, there were eyewitnesses who said that there were actually 11 members, but three of those core members escaped. Then um, at the moment, we understand that uh, some things are being done to see how they can be rescued. But also, uh, in response to that, the Director General of the NYC, Brigadier General Y.D. Ahmed, has held separate meetings with the heads of security agencies in the state, and that's to discuss with over what can be done, how they can all go ahead and be rescued. So that statement was put out by the NYC themselves. Uh, but this morning, we're joined by Mr. Emmanuel Ete, who is a parent of one of the kidnapped core members. So he's just going to tell us what's been going on, because at the moment, uh, they say, look, they haven't gotten a word. Terrorists don't seem to be talking to the NYSC. So, so many people are in the dark about what is going on. Good morning, Mr. Ite. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Yeah, well, it, it appears uh, the connection appears a little weak. We don't know if you can hear me still. It must be very tough and trying times for you and parents of the kidnapped uh, youth corps members. So uh, at the moment, do you have any word from either uh, your ward or even the terrorists or the NYC about the whereabouts of your ward? Okay, I can't seem to hear anything. So, okay, uh, I can't seem to hear anything. We'll stop that at the moment and then bring that back to you. But here in the studio, so I've got uh, Dr. Sani Abdullah Shinkafi, who is the former chairman, Committee on Prosecution of Bandits Related Offenses. Uh, he joins us here. Good morning and thank you for coming on today on the program. Good morning. You know, just trying to imagine what the parents of those kidnapped persons will be going through. It will be a harrowing experience. And, um, just so many questions uh, making the rounds now. Yes, they say the DG of the NYSC has met with uh, several security agencies, uh, terrain that you, you know pretty well. But in terms of how this kind of operations go on, I know you've spoken time and again about this kind of thing. So what is it exactly that we're missing here? How this seem, it still seems to be festering, terrorism, kidnapping, uh, again coming through from Zampara. Uh, it's a terrible uh, situation uh, we are facing in Zamfara and also in the northwestern region. These NYC Corps members were mobilized to Sokoto State for their uh, national mandatory uh, annual uh, national mandatory youth service and uh, on their way in route to Zamfara Highway, they were, their bus was intercepted by the terrorists. And uh, three out of the 11 cop members escaped. The, the driver and the eight cop members were taken to the bush, and their vehicle was abandoned. But what I've heard, that the police were able to the vehicle and, and it's now under police custody. So the issue of this banditry, the government or the federal government must must clear a clear state of emergency on security in the west and the northwest region and most especially also in Zamfara. If they do that, what will change? How will it affect anything? You see, there is a lot of uh, root causes of banditry in Zamfara, and that must be a drastic action to make sure that the issue of banditry, terrorism, 
are being reduced to the barest minimum level. I have said it, time without number, uh, the military who are in the forefront of uh, the, the fight against terrorists and the criminal element in the country are over streets. They are, they are, they are under-equipped, understaffed, and under-trained. If you look at the total military force we have in Nigeria, we have not, not, not more than 230,000 put together the military. The Air Force personnel are only up to 18,000, and the Navy, 25,000. Then if you look at the police, which are in charge of maintenance of law and order and internal security, are not are not are just are not up to four hundred thousand. I look at the size of the population, so there is need for for uh, border control. There's porous border. There's high level of corruption in the border. These terrorists cross the border from Niger, Chad to come with the arms and ammunition. So, if we could just understand a little bit more, uh, in other words, you're telling us that. Persons who these terrorists are not entirely Nigerian. Let, let me say that seventy percent of the terrorists are indigenous. Seventy percent. Seventy percent. Then maybe thirty percent are, are, are aliens. If you if you go to if you go to Zamfara, most of the this notorious and bandit campaign were born and brought off. In Zamfara State, each and every local government has their own kimpin, they call it Kachala. In, we have 40 local government. All these 40 local government are under siege of armed bandit. Armed bandit hold the power there. They are more powerful than the local government chairman. They are more powerful than traditional rulers. So, so how is governance going on in the states? The governance is very tedious and uh, very cumbersome because the problem we have faced or we are facing in Zampara State, the first ambanditary attacks or ambanditary come in force 2009 in Anka and Maru along the Sadao border. That is the, the, the background of the banditry. So the banditry come up as a result of many factors, there's a lot of root cause of banditry. Corruption on the part of the security, corruption on the part of judiciary, corruption and extortion from traditional rulers, uh, forest reserves, grazing reserves, cattle root, farm settlement, where, where it, it, it indiscriminately taken over. This is hydro-headed, but in terms of the corruption component, I don't understand it. Is it that what the bandits are bribing police, the, the, judiciary? The, the, what do you if mean today that? a bandit is arrested, maybe the security personnel who arrested the bandit or the vigilante or the locals, they call the answer okay. When they arrested them and take them to, to police, because police are responsible or for prosecution, not the army. So when they take them to, when army sometimes arrested this bandit and took them to the police, then before the, the people who arrested this bandit go back home, the bandit may even arrive before them at home. Then there will be a reversal attack. They will revenge. So what did there they, will be a counter attack and reversal so attack. So what, do, do they bribe the police to, to get them released or does somebody do it on their behalf? Well, well, I cannot precisely debrief, but I'm telling you that there's a high level of corruption. Yeah, but uh, what and did you uh, find out? You had a committee that investigated this matter. We what have found see? out that there are some even security personnel, military personnel, who have been compounding this problem. Because some of the rustic uh, cattle, sometimes you see even a, we indicted a military personnel, the rustic cattle, he used to load this trustful control and sell it to another livestock market in Jibia. 
It's in the report. So, okay. Well, we'll talk about a little bit more. Particularly, you also mentioned the judiciary, several other people, but just a moment. Uh, I understand we do have, uh, we reestablished connection with uh, Mr. Ete, who is a parent of one of the kidnapped uh, youth court members. Mr. Ete, can you hear me now? Okay. Hey, good morning, sir. Okay, good morning. So, uh, uh, it's really a tough time for you as a parent. I can hear you. Yeah, it's a tough time for you as a parent. We do understand that along several other parents and the country at large because nobody wants to be in this kind of situation, not any country, no one whatsoever. But what can you tell us now? Have you gotten any communication from anywhere whatsoever? Well, um, it's very devastating because so as a parent, I'm very disappointed by government. No one is talking about or asking questions since this incident happened. Security agencies are not caring. NYC leadership shows no concern. And everyone is behaving as nothing happened. Every activity is going on. And keep on asking, is this the type of government we want to belong or our country? Is this the type of security we can feel safer with? NYC invited these children out of from their homes to Sokoto. And if anything happens, I'm expecting some level of commitment from DG of NYC, which has failed. Nobody cares to call their parents. Nobody discussed about it. After flagging it on the news, everybody went away. And we are here, no communication. We don't see our children. And everybody keeps quiet as if nothing happened. So uh, sometimes I wonder, and even as security agencies in Safara, what is their obligatory responsibility in such a situation? Because at, as at now, everyone is boiling. People are asking questions. We are expecting the government to act, but they fail. We are expecting a lot of questions, but nobody seems to ask, and nobody seems to address the nation or the parents of what happened. Where about the children? What the government is planning to do? Or what they are doing to free these children? And that's the state we find ourselves now. Well, uh, tough to hear. We, we, we did get across to NYC in Zanfar, and then they referred us to the HQ, saying, well, they are the ones who can speak on the matter. But there's also word out there that some sort of ransom is being demanded that they contacted the parent. Did that happen with you, for instance? Are you still there, Ms. Ete? Okay, it looks as if we lost that. So, uh, well, and where are we seeing okay. them? They are not more coming. They are not calling. And where are we paying ransom, even if they want us to bring? Mm. No communication. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get the initial part of what you were saying. Did they demand ransom from you, the terrorists? Yes, from initial states, they caught them. They demanded a call for ransom. But since that time, they are no more calling, and nobody communicates. And we don't know what to do. Even if we are to pay the ransom, where are we paying the ransom to? And how are we paying it? And we need a government to intervene, to ask questions, but nothing comes up. Well, that's, that's clearly a tough one. But uh, just hang on, Mr. Tibbop, but um, Dr. Sonny, in this, this kind of matters, um, doesn't the state security agencies, don't they have any role? Are they helpless in this kind of matter? Well, the security agencies are not helpless. Uh, during the last administration, I knew what the, gov what the governor did. You know, in this type of situation, you have to apply two parameters, kinetic and non-kinetic approach. If you say you, are, you use a total military action to rescue a kidnapped victim, then there's going to be a serious collateral damage. But what I know, uh, there are some repented bandits, some repented bandits, who in this type of situation, if it arose, then the government will now approach them on non-connected approach. Uh, please go and talk to these your people release the social people. And the government is not going to pay even a dime as a ransom. So a lot of people were scared 
during the last administration would add pay even a penny. But some of them from so stubborn because some of them, as I have said, are not, are not for example, a state. Yeah, but, but before we talk about the rescue, what about, I mean, is there, what was done when you were there? Because, I mean, the state's authorities know that this is a haven, that anything can happen. Is there no yeah, measure? During, during, was, during, no during the last administration of mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Bello Motole, you know he has initiated a peace dialogue. And through that peace dialogue, those who have embraced the dialogue, it is through those who embrace the dialogue, then we now talk to them, we talk to their people. So some of them, through even such situation, they used to even repent and surrender their arms. More than, more than this locally made guns, uh, AK-47, a lot of arms and ammunition were surrendered by repentant bandits. So in this situation, I don't know the, the present administration, what they are doing in rescuing uh, this type of uh, situation. Because this is a very devastating situation. It's horrible and terrible situation. Mm. Somebody living from Aqua Ibom in route to Zamfara, going to Sokoto for National Youth Service, and their boss is intercepted by terrorists. Uh, it's highly worrisome and yeah, devastating. Sadly, so man. anybody who's a parent who finds his children in this situation, it, 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 it's a serious situation and, uh, and, uh, and highly devastating. Mm. Mr. T, I, I know you've spoken about lack of communication on the part of the NYC on this matter, but could you help us understand this? Was there any advice to your ward in terms of when to travel, when not to travel, and is it true that you know they were traveling at night? Well, um, I might not know what what happened actually when my daughter returned with a call up letter signed by the DG that she was posted to Sokoto. So um she went to AATC Park the that same day, then she was asked to come the next day that all the coppers going to that, that the route that come to Sokoto, there is a bus, they are making arrangements to take them from the park directly to the camp. So they left. She left the house the next morning. Then she kept on, we kept on communicating. So that same man, at night, she told me they were sleeping over, stopped over at Abuja, where they slept the next morning, they took off to Sokoto. So I spoke with her last about 3, uh, uh, 3 p.m., which uh, the day they left Abuja. From that time, around 5 when I called back, the phone was switched off. So it was a Friday, around 7 p.m., I received a call calling me that had, my daughter was in the apostolate. So I tried to call back, the phone was not going. So since that time, the next day, I they called call back again. I spoke with my daughter. So what I told them was I asked her to keep calm. Then I will uh, call them back. From that moment till now, that phone has not gone. And I could not communicate. I've not heard from her. I've not heard from anybody. And the NYC expected some level of commitment, calling parents, telling them, or I, I also expected to address the nation, the state of these children as at now, or what they are doing to feed these children. So there no calls come, nobody case, and everything seems as nothing happened. So it's worrisome. It's worrisome. All right, uh, well, we'll just uh, go to break now, but we'll come back and get a lot more on this matter. For instance, I mean, for those who may have repented, don't they volunteer information in terms of uh, how people can react, what to do in this circumstance. That's part of what Dr. Shinkafi will be talking to us about when we come back from this break. Stay on with us.
Thank you so much for staying with us to having that conversation around security, particularly in the interest of our young in the country. And we've been talking to two gentlemen, but, uh, you know, unfortunately we do not have uh, Mr. Ete, the parent of uh, one of the kidnapped victims. Uh, again, I wanted to even raise an issue about the distance, you know, between a quiet bomb and Zamfara State. Um, if you do a simple Google search yourself, what you will find will be rather shocking. That it will take you something in the region of 20 hours, more than 20 hours, the shortest distance of three options, more than 20 hours some, in some cases, 17 hours, whatever number uh, you, you you choose, depending on the time of day that that, that you are you are going, but the, the kind of vehicle you're using, uh, the kind of uh, the time of day that you are traveling, and all those things, and so those are issues that are in consideration there. And one is wondering if it wouldn't be a good idea for the uh, NYSC, for instance, to take charge of commuting these children across the country because, I mean, look at this uh, situation that we've put s these parents who have no duty being in the kind of situation that they have found themselves now. And let's just hope that with all of these conversations that we are having, indeed, the parents are getting some feedback from the authorities as we speak. Because unless that is happening, uh, I'm wondering if there is anything that we are doing here that we couldn't have done better. But let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Shinkafi. You know, sitting as chair of that committee on prosecution of bandits related offenses uh, in Zamfara State, uh, I don't know if you can tell us what are the things you found out as causes. Now, that may sound trite, it may sound stale, it may sound like we've been talking about it forever, but perhaps that will also give some sense to people about what is happening. Are the causes political? Are they economic? Or are they uh, what uh, you know the police has once called commercial criminality? Well, let me correct you. I'm, I'm not the substantive chairman of the committee for now. I'm the former chairman committee on prosecution and bandit and mandatory related offenses. So uh, that, is, that is the situation now. I'm not the present chairman, and I don't know who is the chairman now, but I'm the former chairman of the prosecution and mandatory related offenses in Zampara State. Under the administration of Dr. Bello Matola Maradon, who is now the present Minister of State for Defense. So the root causes of a banditry in Zampara State, uh, it has a lot of uh, components. And uh, initially or historically, banditry started from uh, herds, uh, herders and the farmers' clashes and turned to cattle rustling metaphose to cattle rustling, and also at the bands to kidnapping or ransom, killing, displacement of uh, innocent people from their ancestral homes, and uh, rapes and um, uh, um, um, robbery. But uh, there's a lot of causes. Uh, indiscriminate allocation of forest reserves, games reserve, grazing area, cattle, uh, uh, cattle routes, and there's higher level of corruption in the judiciary among the security agencies and the extortion of the Spulanis by the traditional rulers. There's forest, forest border, there's a lack of uh, border control, uh, there's illegal immigrants that who are not Nigerians who have used, who have joined banditry. So in a nutshell, banditry is a criminal enterprise where a lot of people come together to commit a crime as armed bandits. 
Armed bandit doesn't have any ideology. They don't promote any ideology like Iswap, Obo, Koharam, but they are terrorists and criminals. So the problem why the armed bandit in the Amphara state has not ended. There are a lot of uh, reasons. There is no sustainability in the fight against crime and criminality in Zampara State. Sometimes the military will do, like Air Force, will do a hit and withdraw approach. When they attack a camp or they hide out of armed bandit, today they won't come back till after maybe three months, five months, even a year. And all these political local government in Zamfara State are under siege of armed bandit and headed by a kingpin, which they call Kachala. And all this they had out during the MD Guso committee for finding lasting solution to armed banditry were able to identify their hideout and their camps and their leaders. And we handed over this report to the state government and we handed over the list of this hideout to Air Force and the military. But the military in Zamfara said are overstretched. They are on, or they are on their train, on their staff, on their equipment, and the terrain there also is not conducive, no accessibility, no access road. So, and the, even some of the traditional rulers, because Zampara State is also a state where it has been there's a population of traditional rulers. It is in, it's, it's only in Zampara State we have 19 emirs, more than 278 or 300 district head, more than 1,000 village head. So some of these traditional rulers were indicted for aiding and abetting Ambandi 3 in our committee reports. So there's a lot of uh, root cause uh, that if the government is ready, to fight this uh, armed bandit, there must be a total military uh, this thing, oppression against this armed bandit. Both the arm, uh, army oppression, both the police oppression, both the air force oppression. So there must be a combined oppression and there must be a synergy among the, the, the security agencies. And they have to shun away the, 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 the interagency robbery to achieve this, this thing. Mm. Sometimes the, the, the DSS will do intelligence gathering and give to action agencies. And this action agency will not act within the, the time frame. Mm. So, well, Mr. Shinkafi, uh, I'm, I'm happy that you are able to, you know, tell us, you know, the background and then the where the challenges are. So essentially, with the report that you've given to the state government at the time, and these issues that you have raised about a lack of cooperation among the security agencies, uh, are you by any chance saying that lack of action is a deliberate activity or attempt by us as a people, without mentioning any specific agency now, to actually perpetrate this crime as opposed to making sure it doesn't continue? Because that's the way it sounds. Well, you see the, you see the military force, that is the army who are in the forefront of the fight against uh, the bandit in Zamparase, is overstretched. If you look at the total, total military personnel in Nigeria, they are not up to 240 personnel. Well, well put, put pardon me, uh, Mr. Shinkafi. Air Force, Navy, yeah, and me. Army. J just a are second. Not up to two, 300 my, my, my apologies. My apologies. Then if you look at the also police. Exactly. Police, 400 yeah. personnel. Mm -hmm. Just a second. So on what that I'm trying issue to tell you that. that you just raised, on the issue of police that you just raised, it is the, prim the primary responsibility of police is not to fight crime but to prevent crime. That underscores what you mentioned the other time about intelligence gathering, to prevent these things from happening. How come we are 
still in the space of fighting something we could have prevented. What, in your opinion, is responsible for this lack of uh, cooperation or collaboration among the security agencies? Well, you see, police, they have a department called counterterrorism. So that counterterrorism sometimes, and the mob mobile police force used to join, to do a joint operation task force. And uh, if you look at the, 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 the total numbers of security personnel in Zamfarase put together, they are understaffed and they, they are under equipped and under trained. So this is the point I'm trying to, to raise. And you know, like Shinkapi, where I come from, and the Zulmi local government share border with the Niger Republic. So there is population of small and lighter arms into, into Zamfara State through the land border. Well, Mr. Shikafi, and the part of the part of the go ahead, please go ahead. Part of the uh, uh, constitutional responsibility of the military, in accordance with the section. 217 subsection 1 that the Nigerian armed forces are charged with the responsibility of protection of territorial integrity in our land border, in the sea, also on the airspace. So this forest border border crossing, the, 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 the immigration and the customs. One of them even are also aiding and abetting this banditry because of the high level of corruption in the border. Well, Mr. Shinkari, so these are the problems. Yes. Also, you see, so Koto share boundary with the Niger Republic, mm. Kebi share boundary with the Niger Republic, mm. and Kasina share boundary with the Niger Republic. And this is one of the epic center. Mm. Well, this also banditry. raises another and, question. And, and let me let me let me be let me be let me very specific to you. Okay. Zampara is the epic center of banditry, but banditry in the northwest. All these five states, Kasina, KB, Sokoto, Kaduna, and, uh, and the Zamfara state in the northwest, including Niger state, we share one route, Niger state. This, band, this, this stage, state, are under siege. Last Friday, worshippers were attacked in a mosque. Seven worshippers were killed in Saya Saya, in Ikra local government in Kaduna state. Well, so, Mr. So the, I'm calling Mr. President to, to declare set of emergency on security. Well, most certainly so many, in, so many in, in issues to raise in the conversation that you're having with us this morning. But how do you respond to this also? Uh, not too long ago, we heard, you know, from the Minister of uh, Defense that mining activities is also a reason fueling insecurity in the northwest some say that because of the multi-billion naira uh, illegal or legal mining activities going on in zamfara state that uh, some of these insecurity issues are supposed to divert attention from the real criminality which is this illegal mining mining is that something you can confirm in any way manner shape or form well, illegal mining contributed to the insecurity in Zampara State. But the illegal miners were banned from mining for the, by the last administration since, 20, to, since 2019. The real miners who have license, who have mining lease, were banned from mining, were suspended. The mining activity was suspended by the last administration. But the, now the bandit who are in the hideout took advantage of the ban. And the bandits also engage in illegal mining with the foreigners. People from Burkina Faso, from Mali, from Chad, took over this site. But when the legal miners are mining in their site before the ban, they used to seek for security protection in their mining site. But now the burning activities who are the legal miners abandon their site and their site were taken over by these bandits in collaboration with the foreigners. Mm. So okay. that is why I'm, 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 I'm also blaming 
immigration for, for, for liberation of this immigrant. Mm. All right. Well, into, into Nigeria. Yes, we, we we've since uh, had uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ete back, who is a parent of uh, one of the kidnapped uh, core members. Um, Mr. Ete again, uh, since uh, uh, I don't know, I don't even know how to feel about you know what you're saying. I mean, to us so far, but I mean, you said you haven't heard anything from uh, any security agency so far. I'm just wondering. Can you confirm whether or not, are you in touch with other parents or guardians of other core members who are in the same space as you? Are you hearing anything from them? Is there anyone speaking to any one of them that you may or may not be aware of? Mr. Ete, can you hear me? So, that will be difficult for now. So, I didn't quite, quite catch uh, much of what you said. Could you please go again? Oh, yeah, the network is not very uh, friendly to us. But, uh, Mr. Ete, it will be good to... If you can, uh, just make the effort as you are. Well, I mean, we really do sympathize with you and other parents. I'm just wondering if other parents have been contacted by anyone at all, be it the kidnappers, the uh, authorities, the NYC, anyone at all. It would be helpful to know if that is happening. Oh. All right, well... Let's, let's come back to you, uh, Mr. Shinkafi. So, this situation right now that you are, I mean, you are, we're, we're talking about this kidnapping thing, uh, it's not the first time. It's been happening over and over again. I mean, you, you've also spoken to some of these things, and it will seem like uh, insecurity is manifesting itself in different ways, manners, shapes, and forms. And, but, you know, the most troubling of all of these for me, is what you said about us having information that a crime would be committed and no one does anything about it timelessly. At whose desk do we put this particular information? Well, the, you know, after the compilation of our report, the report was handed over to the governor and the governor we have made some recommendations and the former governor have, have taken steps to, 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 uh, to implement the recommendations. Some of the traditional rulers were indicted in that effort. Some were dethroned and taken to court. And also, the, from 1999 to 2019, all the land allocated, the palm lands, the grazing reserve, the porous reserve, the cattle route, which were indiscriminately uh, allocated by the traditional ruler, all the land were revoked by the, by, the, by, the, by the previous administration. It's one of the measures. And also the governor come up with the, uh, this dialogue. Some of the notorious bandits were able to repent and surrender their arms and ammunition, and they were reintegrated into the society. But with the present situation now, there's a serious resurgence of this uh, armed banditry and other criminal element in the state. So what this administration is doing, I'm not part of it, and I cannot uh, only believe for the governor or neither for the commissioner for security. But all the reports we have handed over to the government and governor have done a lot to address the issue. All right. The major problem we have faced in Zampara State, most of the politicians are toying with the lives of the innocent people, playing politics with the unbodied or insecurity. Okay. In this last election, there's a lot of uh, this campaign of colony on this issue of insecurity. All right, ju just one more, pardon me, we'll, we'll just one more thing before we go, uh, to wrap up on this matter. Uh, if you can make it brief, that would be nice. Now, for those you say repented, 
terrorists that repented while you were in office. Don't they volunteer information in terms of the mode of operation of terrorists such that when cases like this happen, security agencies know how to respond? Does that happen? Who did they pass information to? Are you aware of any? Well, the repented bandit, I know, uh, the, the Fraser governor says is not going to go into any peace dialogue with the bandit. What about the former government? But the former, the former governor has gone into dialogue. If this type of situation happened, we used to reach out to this repented bandit, and this repented bandit will work with security agencies to either rescue them or to also uh, collect them from their captors. Okay. Yeah. And without right. paying any ransom. Without so, paying ransom? Without paying ransom. Okay. Yes. Well, but, you, but, um... but this administration, uh, I'm telling you, many people were killed. Many people were kidnapped. All right. More than 2,000 people were killed and kidnapped. Not well, any place in Zampara, any for the local government is safe. So I'm we, calling we will, on the leadership um... of NYIC to stop posting youth cop members to Sokoto, KB, even Zamfara. Well, this is going to hit at the heart of the NYSC, how they handle this particular matter, because it's a very, very serious matter in Thailand. They need to also communicate to the parents if they haven't done that, because you just heard one of the parents say, no word from the core. And um, we'll also keep trying to get across to the government and the governor to see what their response will be on this matter and security generally moving forward. But we have to thank you for coming on this morning. Sani Abdullah Shinkafi, former chairman, Committee on Prosecution of Bandits-Related Offences.